Hello, my Alley Pallies, and thank you for joining me today. Now, today I'm doing the long since promised since last Wednesday or Tuesday. Tuesday, wasn't it? <gasps> Feels like a year since last Tuesday. But I'm going to do the Pat McGrath look that you all asked for after I showed you me wearing it. Now, I've put on a quite sort of um, flawless base today. So, um, you know, the usual ones, but if you want to check out what I used, it's in the description bar, Charlotte Tilbury, mainly. I haven't divulged what I've used as a concealer and colour corrector because um, I'm going to do a video on it tomorrow. It's a bit of a discovery of mine. Um, so stay tuned for that, okay? But now I'm going to get going with the Pat McGrath look exactly as I did it last week. So stay tuned and I hope you enjoy it. Okay, so first on in, what I find with the Pat McGrath um, eyeshadows, and I'm going to show you which one I'm using in a minute, they're really pigmented, they're stunning, but they don't tend to last that long. Um, they kind of wear off throughout the day, right? But easy way to get around this, Colour Chameleon. And as you can see, I think I need to order another one of these. Um, this is Amber Haze, which is the uh, one suggested for brown eyes. But it is, let me just show you, I've just been just testing that it's still okay to use on my hand. It is a gold, a sort of bronzy gold colour like that, which is going to go really well with this look. And it's quite similar when she uses this in the bombshell look which is basically the same kind of look I'm gonna do, but using Pat McGrath. Okay, so first on in, I'm gonna go in and I'm just gonna scribble this as though I'm a three-year-old, because you really don't need to worry too much. Scribble this on, and before it sets, just blend it with your fingers. It's that easy. This is drying out a bit because it's old but it will still do the job. What I tend to do is when my colour chameleons are drying out, I use them more as eyeshadow primers because they still do their job, but they're not quite as pigmented anymore. Don't overstock on your colour chameleons because they do dry out over time. So just scribbling this on. This is the one that Charlotte says, by the way, I'm going to be chatting a lot through this video because I miss you all. So sorry, I'm not fast forwarding through a lot of these because I want to chat to you. So sorry about that. Shoot me. Um, This is the one that Charlotte says that her, uh, her sons could have done when they were about five. And it's true. It's really easy. Okay, and then I'll just take a little bit and put it underneath, like so. I just rub it in with my fingers. It's that easy. And these are good to just use on their own. When they're new and they're a bit more pigmented, that look on its own is fine. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the Pat McGrath palette that I used last okay, week. Okay, so for this look, I'm using the Pat McGrath Sublime, Mothership Sublime Bronze Ambition palette, which is the smaller of the palettes. And I actually prefer this to a larger palettes. They just, it, they're just creamier. So this is what the palette looks like. I've still got the little plastic because it tells you what the colours are. And what I'm going to do, first of all, is I'm going to use the matte brown as a transition shade, which is this one here. And that one is called Bronze Struck. Bronze Struck. And it's a matte kind of brick brown. Let me just show you that on my hand. So that's going to work for me as a transition shade. I'll get my brush and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm going to go in with a blending brush and just use that um, matte shade. 
as a transition. Now, do you know what? I think I got the, the things mixed up. Did I get the things because I had it upside down? No, it's, it is bronze struck, I'm sure. It, no, it could be throwing shade. I'm sorry, because if you hold it one way up, this doesn't really help you. It's annoying, because if you hold it that way up, then it, the colours say something else. I think this one's called Throwing Shade. Por apologies. I thought it was a weird name for a matte shade called Bronze Struck. Yeah, that's this one, I think. That's Bronze Struck. This is Throwing Shade. All right, so I'm going to go in with this. Now, ladies, when you're doing a look like this, because you're doing a bronze eye and you're doing a red lip, um, now is not the time to go for a kind of light, skin-like coverage. You need, to, with a red lip, you really need to have a bit more of a flawless um, foundation, which is why I've used Airbrush Flawless. Um, because if you don't, it kind of, a red lip tends to highlight imperfections on your face. So if you're going for a bold red lip, it's fine. But just make sure you use a fuller coverage than you might do for something like the pillow talk look, for example. So I'm just using this in my socket to give me a bit of throwing shade, as it's very aptly called. I need space to put this palette down so that I can hold my eye and not drag it. So I'll just bear with me a second, it's better. And then I'm gonna use a smudge brush to just take that brown underneath. Okay, now next on in, I'm going to use this shade, which is what I used last week. And again, I don't know, let me just try and work out which one it is. It is called Copper Eyes, right, yeah. So it's this shade here. Okay, and I'm gonna put that on my mobile lid. Now you could use a flat brush, you could use a flat damp brush, but I love putting shimmers on with my fingers. They apply so well. Um, they just look beautiful, so why bother with a brush when a finger does just as good a job? Look at that pigment, let me just show you this. Oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So I'm just gonna apply that to my mobile lid. Okay, so next on in, trying to cover the mirror here, I'm going to take this dark shade right at the bottom here. Um, and this one is called... Um, what are you called? You're called... You can't be called... You're, it's called Illicit. And I'm going to put that on with a smudge brush in the corner. Now, it does have a bit of a shimmer. Let me just show you what it looks like. But I actually find because it's so dark, it doesn't reflect too much light. Okay, so it's got a little bit of a shimmer, but it finds it works for me, even though I try to avoid shimmer on my hood of my eye. It, it doesn't tend to show up too much. So I'm just going to use that with a smudge brush to build up the intensity in the corner like this. And then take it out and lift up the eye and you, I'm going to do my usual thing of placing it first and taking a little bit under and relaxing my eyes and then the other side. So when you've got hooded lids you want to actually see the socket and when you've got a large hood you can't always you're painting in a socket you're suggesting more shadow um, and but you need to see that 
when your eyes are relaxed. Otherwise, it doesn't have the effect that you want. I did do a tutorial about hooded lids and eye shapes, um, and I'll try and find it and link it below in the description bar for you, because I explained all this then. So I'm relaxing my eyes again, and as you can see, I've got one more hooded than the other, which means that I always have to kind of adjust this side and take it a little bit higher just so that when I relax my eyes, it looks even. Right, so now that I've got it kind of more or less symmetrical, not that any of us are ever that symmetrical, um, I'm now gonna take my blending brush and I'm gonna blend, 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 and I will put this on fast forward. Okay, now I'm going to go back to my smudge brush and clean it off. And then I'm going to go in with this shade. Now you can just about get away with using this as a highlighter. It's a little bit on the dark side. If you're fairer skin than me, just substitute instead of using this shade, which is a little bit dark for a highlighter. Um, I would use, I would go in and use something like a highlighter instead to do this. But I'm just going to put this under my brow. If you're darker skin than me, perfect highlighter. If you're the same shade as me, you can just about get away with it. If you're paler than me, then use whatever highlighter that you're going to use on your cheeks. And then I'm going to pop some of that in here, same shade. And then with my fingers, I'm going to use that one and I'm just going to pop it in the center of my lid. Again, just to make that mobile lid look a bit more concave and therefore suggest a bit more, a bit less hoodedness to my eyes. Again, it's all explained in my tutorial on hooded lids. You want to make this look more concave and you want to make this look like there's more shadow and that gets rid of the look of your hooded lids. And then what I did finally is I took that copper shade that I put on my mobile lid first of all and I took the smudge brush and I took it underneath and I kind of started halfway along and took it into the corner. And I'm sorry about my son shouting in the background. And that's the look. Then I'm going to take, now you could do one of two things here. You could just use a black eyeliner, which is what I'm going to use today. Or you could, this works really well if you wet it and use that as a lot eyeliner. Um, it's re really looks lovely actually, um, but I'm just going to use a black eyeliner. I'll do black mascara and I'll do my brows and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've done my brows, I've done my mascara. Now, if you want to make your eyes pop even more with this look, <coughs> you've got two options. You can either use a skin colour in your waterline or you can use a contrasting kind of blue or green works really well obviously i've got purple on today could do that but today i'm just going to use charlotte's eye cheat okay so then i'm going to move on to my lips okay so first on in i'm going to line my lips 
with Charlotte Tilbury's Kiss and Tell. Now, last week, you know that I used Charlotte Tilbury's um, Tell Laura, which is beautiful. It's a bright red. You can use any bright red lipstick, whichever one you prefer, whichever one suits your complexion the best for this look. Um, but today I want to use Daniel's Micro Red. This is my favourite lipstick. I've just had to go and root for it in my handbag. It's always in my handbag or in my dressing gown. And the reason it's so good is a number of reasons. The packaging is weighty and heavy and feels luxurious. It is pigmented. It's a stunning shade of red. It is moisturising, but doesn't slide off your lips within five seconds of putting it on. Um, it's just everything you'd want in a lipstick and it's £14.25. pence. It is my favourite all-time red lipstick. If you haven't tried Daniel Sandler's Michael Red, I highly recommend it. It will just pep up your complexion whenever you want. You can also dab a little bit on your cheeks, which I actually might do today. Right, so I'm going to put this on. I'm going to put it on my top lip first. This was a little tip from Daniel. I know he was talking about dabbing on the um, the, the um, new gel cream blushes. And he said, apply to your top lip first because it makes your lips look fuller. And I thought it may not apply to putting on a bullet, but I'm going to do it anyway, just in case it does. And that is my look for today, which is the Pat McGrath bombshell, Charlotte Tilbury's bombshell look using Pat McGrath and Daniel Sander. And let me finish off with a pop of this rather than going to look for another blush. Because often it feels quite difficult to match a red lipstick with a blush. So when in doubt, use the lipstick. It will be sure to match. I just blend this in a minute and I'll be right back because it's gonna take a little bit of blending before I don't look like I'm having a hot flush. Okay, last little tip, because I still look like I've got a hot flush. I went a bit bananas with the amount. This is really pigmented. If you get to, and you do that and you think, oh no, what am I going to do? Just take your beauty blender or whatever you applied your foundation with and just dot it back over the top and it will take down because it will have a bit of your foundation mixed in with it still and it will just take down the heat from where you've over applied your blush, okay? And there we have it. So that is my look today. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you to everyone that sent their best wishes to my dad. He's still in hospital. He's going to be in for a few more days yet, but he's on the mend. And um, I've been telling him about all your best wishes and reading them to him. So thank you so much. And I'll see you all very soon. Take care. Have a lovely day. Mwah!